بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله After Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about in the introductory verses of Surah Al-Ghashiyah which was mentioned in the first session spoke about things that will happen in the uh, Hereafter, then the, the speech uh, changed to talking about things that are uh, in the universe. There are very clear signs of the greatness of the Creator, and Allah Azza wa Jal rebucked the uh, polytheists of Quraysh for them deafening their ears and blinding their eyes from seeing and hearing the truth, and did not give heed to the signs leading to belief in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal, the speech again switches to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again, once again, to set the boundaries of his responsibility and mission and what is asked of him and what his duties are. Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرٌ So remind, O Muhammad, you are only one who reminds. Your duty is only to remind. Your duty is only to convey. Convincing people, guiding people is not in your hand, it's in the hands of Allah. You see, the Prophet ﷺ used to be very soft-hearted and he wanted everybody to believe. So Allah Azza wa Jal is removing this burden of worrying about everybody accepting the, the message and telling him, your only mission is to remind, is to convey. لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرِ Again, addressing him alayhi salatu wasalam, you are not over them a controller, meaning you do not dictate to them what to believe and what to not to believe, what to do and what not to do. You don't have control over that. You have no authority. Your mission is limited, restricted to conveying the message of Allah Azza wa Jal. Your mission is strictly distinguishing what's right and what's wrong, the truth from falsehood. And the results are with Allah Azza wa Jal. And this makes it easy for those who call to the path of Allah. The da'iyah, who sees a lot of rejection, who sees no effect, no fruits of his work. Well, that's not your responsibility. That's not part of your task. Convincing people is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to st establish evidence, to convey. Say, oh people, this is the truth and this is falsehood. This is correct and this is wrong. This is right and this is false. But don't overburden yourself when you don't see anyone responding or accepting the truth. This is a direct message to Muhammad وسلم, in the speech. And it's also to the Muslim nation after him alayhi salatu wasalam. You see, it's very depressing when one strives so hard and works day and night and then sees no effect. Allah Azza wa is saying, you only have to remind, you have no control. إِلَّا مَنْ تَوَلَّى وَكَفَرَ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ اللَّهُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَكْبَرِ Whoever, except for he who turns away from the truth and disbelieves, then Allah will punish him with the greatest punishment. 
Meaning, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa continue to remind, continue to do your, your mission, continue to fulfill your task, and don't worry about those who deny and reject, and insists to remain a disbeliever, and in the case of believers, insists to sin, because their consequences with Allah Their punishment is going to be taken care of by Allah. Their return is going to be only to Allah and not to no one else. And it is Him subhanahu wa ta'ala who will give them the recompense of what they did, what they sent forth in this dunya to the hereafter. And this is also a message to the, the deniers, the disbelievers, and disobedient. That the matter is not going to end in this dunya. Okay, you want to deny, you want to disobey, you want to disbelieve? That's yours to decide. But then, remember, you will be coming back. And the consequence of what you did will be given to you in full. Al-Tabari rahmatullahi said, the greatest punishment is the punishment in this dunya. In addition to burning in the fire of hell in the hereafter. The Prophet sallallahu warned us believers from acting like the disbelievers and turning away and escaping from Allah Azza wa See, the description the Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is reported by Al-Hakim and classified as authentic by Al-Albani and narrated by Abu Umama. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all of you will enter Jannah, except for the one who turns away and escapes from Allah, like a camel escapes from its own. Can you imagine someone running away from Allah so fast and so far? What would be the consequence of this? This turning away and running away from Allah is referring to someone who is disobedient and turning away from the truth, turning away from the commandments of Allah Azza wa indulging in all prohibitions and all that displeases, displeases Allah Azza wa How can a believer accept and be content with a situation like this? Not be scared to die upon the situation in this state. Allah concludes saying, Inna ilayna iyabahum, thumma inna alayna hisabahum. Surely to us is their return then surely upon us is their account and reckoning. Allah is again is addressing Muhammad وسلم, telling him to continue to remind people with the truth without trying to force that onto them because he is not responsible for forcing that onto people and that his mission is only to remind and convey and then leave their affairs and leave their consequence to us because they will return and we will hold them to account and reckoning. Allah Azza wa Jal used inna in both verses. Inna ilayna iyabahum thumma inna alayna hisabahum. Inna in Arabic is used to confirm something is going to happen. So here Allah Azza wa Jal is confirming resurrection. It is certainly going to happen. What you're denying is something certain. And it also entails a threat and a warning for those who deny resurrection and refuse the message 
of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it also confirms that they will return to Allah Azza wa Jal for account. So it's not just merely resurrection and there is nothing going to happen after being resurrected. No, you will be resurrected and surely your denial, you will be paying the price of your denial, your rejection, or for the case of the believers, for your disobedience. With this we conclude the uh, surah, surah Al-Ghashiyah, and we conclude this session. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to benefit us from what we said and what we heard and make us deserving of his mercy and his jannah. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa hamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubilik.